Okay, everyone. Now, if you want to deploy to Vercel using Next.js, of course, you need to have a Next.js project. I have here a project, a simple project that I'm using. It's on Next.js version 16. So this video is up to date with the latest version of Next.js. If you wanna just learn how to deploy and you don't have a project in mind, feel free to use the same project because the code will be in the description. Now, the first thing that you need to do is you need to create a repository where you're going to push the code that you have for your project uh, using GitHub. Now, it doesn't have to be a public repository. As you can see, I'm gonna click here, new, uh, and you could create a private one if you want to. I'm making it public so you guys can see it, and I'm going to name it Deploy Vercel Tutorial, just because I'm using this for this video. Then you need to create the repository, come back to your project, and I need you to push this code to GitHub. To do that, we're gonna first initialize a GitHub repository inside of this directory by running git init, then we're going to add code to this um, repository. And then we're going to copy this command over here up until the git add, and we're going to push it over here. After it's done, we should see the code appearing over here. Perfect. Now we are ready to deploy. We'll just grab and open up our browser and go to vercel.com. Now, if you don't have a Vercel account, feel free to create one and make sure to use GitHub because that's the method of deploying that we're gonna be using in this video. When you connect your GitHub account to your Vercel account, you're going to be able to easily just grab the repository that you have published and put it directly into Vercel. I'm gonna click continue with GitHub and I'll be back in a second. Now you should go into your projects and you don't have to have a pro version, you can have a free one and click on add new project. Then because you connected your GitHub account, the name of this repository should appear as the latest one over here. You're just going to click on import and it will open up this page. This is your deployment page. The first thing you need to do is you need to make sure that the framework preset is Next.js. Most likely it's going to be that by default because it recognizes that it is a Next.js project. The next thing is you need to set up environment variables. If your project has a .env file, like mine over here doesn't actually have one. However, imagine if I did. For example, picture the situation where I have a .env file on this project and it has a bunch of variables. I just made this real quick, just as an example. What you need to do is you need to copy this and because this wasn't pushed to your GitHub, of course, you don't wanna have in environment variables there. You're gonna copy that and then just command C, command V over here and it's going to automatically add all of your environment variables inside of the project. Then you can close that and click the button to deploy. Now it's gonna start deploying your project and if it goes the way that it usually goes for me, there's gonna be an issue with the deployment. Now that issue is usually due to either ESLint failures or TypeScript failures. It will list out to you exactly what the error is on the build logs. Because I made my project very simply, I know it's, there's no issues, it's going to deploy perfectly. But if you have any issues, you have to uh, fix them first and then click the button to redeploy. If you don't, you're gonna see this screen over here. This is the deployment screen. Now, if you click on the image, you'll see the version of your website live for everyone to use. The domain that you're gonna get is gonna be the name of your repository, .vercel.app, unless that name of that repository already exists. Surprisingly, no one who's deployed to Vercel has ever had this specific repository name. Now, the next thing you can do is click on continue to dashboard and here's where you can see the entire dashboard for your project. You can see all of the deployment attempts that you've made. You can see any analytics that you might have by enabling it and to enable it, you actually have to add a component to your project. It's a whole other thing. And you can see speed insights the same way, any logs that has happened and so on. And that's pretty much it. I wanted to make this super quick video because I've made the same video for normal React projects and now it's time to make it for Next.js. If you have any doubts, just comment down below. And if you wanna check out my full Next.js course for beginners, I'll leave the link for it in the description. It will take you from beginner to advanced by building projects and is without a doubt the best Next.js course out there in the world. So if you're interested, just go ahead and click the link in the description. Thank you so much for watching and I see you guys next time.